uh, about day before yesterday and yesterday's sessions. Anything? Sir. Yes, please. Sir, function keys here it is f8 depending on which is your laptop you will have one of the function keys if you press that you will get these kind of options okay now this since uh, this is on extend you will get these kind of options so disconnect duplicate extend or projector only so use extend for this now what happens when you use extend your screen is not being duplicated on to the projector so, and when you uh, okay let me come back to duplicate so you can see what I am doing with PowerPoint so in PowerPoint in the slideshow menu you have an option which says use presenter view see this okay so select this option Okay, now what it is saying is that you have at one point right now because it is duplicate, it is not, there is no other screen, so it is not selecting that option. When I go to extend, I'll just show you. So, what I am doing now is I'm going to extend, after that, I will select this. Now, when I've gone to extend, you can't see my screen. You can just see a blank wallpaper. Say my wallpaper is being reflected there. Now, I have selected that use presenter view here, and I have put the PowerPoint in the slideshow mode now what you are seeing here is the part of the slide but what is being shown here I'll show you this display also now okay this is the view you get on your laptop now on the right are the slide notes when you're making the slide below the slide you see you can make notes so that is there on the right Yeah, so actually, actually the point is that you are not, you're not supposed to read out from your notes. You want to use your notes just for reference, right? And use it in point form. So okay. make, it, make it in bold form, make it in point form. I mean, one is of course, certain points are there on your slide also. Certain explanation that you want, or maybe things that you want to remember, but not put on your slide, you can put it on your notes and you can use this. So that doesn't mean that this restricts you to this place, you can keep moving around and while you're talking, you ask someone a question. The person is answering you, come and have a look. That's classroom man. Can you hold that thought? Yeah. Because that question is going to be answered in my session. Right? 
So remember when, uh, when I'm talking about facilitating, uh, I, I will be talking about something called polling technique, right? So uh, if I don't remember to bring it up at that point of time, please bring it up again. Because that question is going to be answered, right? Yes. These are suggestions, right? It's not that you must that if you don't move around or if you are if you are uh, you know uh, uh, if you are not in uh, you know moving around with the participants or you're not uh, this thing you're not giving a good presentation or conversely that if you're sitting there and if you're standing at one place you are uh, not giving a good presentation, right? So it's not that. these are not rules these are just suggestions these are things which absolutely absolutely absolutely. Having said that, having said that, I mean, you look at it yourself. That if I am, uh, you know, all the, if I am standing here all the time and I am just presenting it, or if I am here and I am interacting and I am moving around, as a participant, what would have more impact? Okay? Just think about it. That, that's all. That is not to say that, that I can't do it that way, or it will be any less effective. Maybe this is slightly more effective. It, it's your style. It's your style. Any other questions? So we can move for tea? Yes. Uh, 10 35. 10 50? 10? 10 50, yeah. 10 50, we resume. Okay, yeah. thank you. last session that I'll be taking. Uh, so one hour session essentially on facilitation, right? Uh, the session is requirements, qualities and role of a trainer. So these are things that we are all aware of. What do you think are the requirements from a trainer? Anybody? Very good, listener. Okay. <coughs> Patient. Okay. And also, I think on subject, not every time, you know, he has to update his knowledge on a, at a regular frequency. Okay. That's okay. That's so, main. so a very good listener, a lot of patience and subject matter knowledge, yeah. which should be constantly updated. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> yeah. Background of the students. So that is something that he should know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What else? A good orator. A good orator, good communication skills, communication. right? Okay. Enthusiastic. 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 Absolutely. Encouraging with good attitude. Engaging with good. Encouraging. Encouraging with good attitude. Okay. What else? Unbiased. Unbiased. Ability to think on your feet. Yeah. Ability to learn from the participants also. Ability to learn from the Managed participants. Group. Manage the group. So Manage. good interpersonal skills, yeah. uh, an open mind, right? All these are what we say qualities of a trainer, right? We all agree. Now, uh, let me just digress for two minutes and let me ask you, when you say that he is a competent trainer, right? When we talk about competency, Right. What do we imply? What are the ingredients of competency? You've said the qualities. Are these the same? So would these, having all these qualities, would these imply that he's a competent trainer? To great extent. To great extent. To great extent. Okay. So what is the catch? Use or mix these qualities in a proper way, basically. 
how are you applying those qualities Translated. is actually so potential energy to kinetic energy. Uh, right? He <laughs> become an energy man now. <laughs> See solar what it can do for you. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, someone said, any advice for the solar uh, this thing because I'm doing a solar TOT. I said, yeah, only one advice, keep shining. <laughs> so, so, what is, what, what, how would you therefore define competency? What you talked about, what, what, what we defined, sorry, just, just to interrupt you. What we defined as far as qualities are concerned are essentially skills, right? So, what is the difference between skills and competency? See, I might have the skill, but I don't know how to translate it. For example, okay. I have the knowledge, right. but I am not able to transfer it in a way that you can actually understand and grasp it. That is absolutely. absolutely. So, ma'am, sorry. Transfer. Transfer. Transferring of that? Okay. So, merely having the skills and, uh, you, sorry, before that you said skills are technical, right? Agree? But in addition to technical, there are also those soft skills which we spoke about, that uh, communication skills and uh, you know listening and uh, interpersonal skills so those are so you have to have a combination of technical as well as uh, soft skills and the attitude right so essentially competency is the application of your skills for the performance of a defined task up to up to a set standard when, when you say competent or not competent, that means we have set a standard, yeah. right? So therefore, a competent trainer is someone who uses these skills, what we just talked about, these qualities, to carry out the assigned task. What is the assigned task? The no. knowledge transfer. You have the knowledge, maybe within you, maybe in your material, your task is to transfer that knowledge in a manner that your participants are able to assimilate it, right? And standards, who sets the standards? The participants or the organizers. So what is the outcome of the training? If you want to measure the impact of the training, that will tell you whether, you know, the job has been done satisfactorily or not, right? And one very small part or indicator of that is the feedback that you get, but that is, a, that is not all. Okay. The, the standard or the, the, the measure of whether your task <coughs> as a trainer has been completed satisfactorily has four components. Feedback reflects the first component, which is did they like it? <coughs> What is being reflected in the feedback essentially or which can be tangibly measured from the feedback is that did the participants like the program, right? The second stage is did they learn? Right? How can you find out whether they have learned or not? Assessment. Assessment, right? Assessments may be written or over. Or oral or maybe uh, a project based assessment, maybe asked to carry out a certain task. Okay. <coughs> now, did they like it? Did they learn it? Did they apply it? Having learned the thing, having learned about all these training methodologies and all these you know tips and tricks, when you actually go back and do a training, did you apply all this? That is the third measure of how successful a training is. But how do you actually, you know, how, how do you know whether they have applied or not? So That's you may come to know, you may not come to know. Yeah. I tell you how you come to know is if you have a system within within the, you know, within the training program per se. Suppose this, this program has a system of assessing the trainers, right? Now when you assess, the assessment again is, did they learn? Yeah. 
and you may have a deeper assessment that some an assessor comes and assesses your training. Yes. So were these methods applied, that that assessor is going to physically go and verify, right? And lastly, is did they benefit? Having applied it, was it of any benefit? Now, whether this is measured or not, as a trainer, when you are delivering your training, you have to, and you want to make your training, uh, uh, you know, effective and as best as possible. You have to keep in mind these four things. That these are the four things based on which you need to deliver or configure your training program. Your participants should like your program. They should learn what you wanted to teach them. They should be able to go back and apply it. That means it should be in a practical form. And they should be able to benefit from that application. 